Stuck, written by the buried truck. Thomas had gone to the works to be mended. Sir Tom and Pat had asked Duck to look after the branch line. Duck was delighted. It was nice to get out of the yard, and he got on swimmingly with the coaches. Percy was happy to see him again, and Toby was glad of the help, but found Duck to be rather opinionated. One morning, Toby was bringing cars from the quarry. Bertie was approaching in the road crossing, but to Toby's horror, he wasn't slowing down. The brakes came on, and both engine and bus took their lives. They just missed each other. I've got a new driver today. He seems to think I can beat you at that crossing. That's all right, Toby smiled. I just hope he doesn't put you in harm's way again. Duck arrived with Annie and Clarabelle. He'd heard everything. Didn't your driver see the crossing gates? He quizzed Bertie. There are no gates, Toby replied. It's Duck gasped. How can you run on a line with no gates? It isn't dignified. Why, those road vehicles wouldn't know to stop otherwise. I know when to stop, thank you, scowled Bertie. It's for your own safety as well as ours, Bertie, replied Duck. Accidents can cause problems for us all. Duck looked at Toby. You should ask Sir Topham Hat to put up gates at once. You should have asked him ages ago. Toby and Bertie said nothing more. They just looked at each other. I don't believe it, Percy, said Duck. I never thought Toby would be foolish enough to run on an unsafe line. The line is safer because Toby runs on it, replied Percy. His cow catchers and side plates work wonders. You needn't worry, Duck. If Sir Topham Hat thought that crossing needed gates, they'd have been installed already. Duck was unconvinced they were needed, in his opinion. Recently, one of the level crossings had been having issues with its gates. Sometimes they worked as they were meant to, others they stuck. No matter how hard the signalman pulled the lever, there hadn't been any accidents, only headaches from the delays, and the engines took great care when they approached. Unfortunately, no one had warned Duck. The next morning, Duck was puffing happily along. The coaches sang quietly to each other, and Duck was pleased with himself. He passed a level crossing, its gates keeping traffic at bay. Now that's the way, he thought, just like a proper railway. At the troublesome crossing, the cars and trucks had passed safely. A new signal was covering for the regular one. He pulled the lever and went back to his coffee. He didn't notice the gates were stuck. Duck soon approached. He saw the gates, but didn't worry. They'll open, they'll open, he smiled. But they didn't. Stop, stop, cried Duck. There was Duck, that sat at the crossing, remnants of the gates clinging to his front. Oh dear, he blushed. There wasn't time to examine Duck. Traffic was starting to build on either side of the crossing. Percy had to pull him to the next station. When they arrived, Toby and Bertie were there. Toby, asked Bertie innocently, who's that? It's stuck, replied Toby, though it seems he can't decide between pulling a train and being a crossing guard. Whatever he's doing, it doesn't look very safe to me. They laughed, and Bertie roared away with his passengers. Duck blushed and looked at his buffers, decorated by the broken gate. He 
certainly wouldn't be making any remarks about safety for quite some time.